said, the center is the offer. And we brought in all these experts to talk to you about the supporting aspects of that offer. And that last piece, that last supporting aspect of your offer is what? Traffic. Traffic. Because if nobody sees your offer, nobody can buy. That just makes sense. Now, here's the great thing. The gentleman who I'm about to bring to the stage just wrote and is about to release a book called Traffic Secrets. Here's the other awesomest part. He hasn't taught any of the book to anybody yet. Would you like to be the first to learn some of the secrets from the book? Oh, oh you would, would you? Okay, well, if you would, go ahead and stand up for me and let's do something to welcome them to the stage together. I want you to repeat after me. Say, hey, Russell. Hey, Russell. I don't think he heard you. Let's try that one more time. Say, hey, Russell. Hey, Russell. Would you please, would you please come, to come to the stage and share your awesomeness with us? And ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Mr. Russell Brunson. Sit down, sit down. If I just came home, this is amazing. But thanks for coming to my home for this event. It made it way easier. Um, I can hang out with my wife and kids at night. It's, it's fantastic. No, um, so happy to have you guys here in Boise with us. Has the last day and a half been amazing so far? Yeah. Very cool. Um, I just want to like take a moment and uh, just acknowledge Stephen Larson or Steve Larson, whatever he goes by today. Um, <laughs> We always call him Thieven in the office, just so you guys know, because uh, every night, the way he spelled it always changed. But it's crazy to look back, and uh, a couple of funnel hacking lives ago, he you know, bootstrapped his way, I'm sure you guys have heard the story, to get there, he slept in the lobby. Um, two days after that, was in my office asking for a job, and then uh, fast forward now a couple of years, and was able to bring 650 people to Boise, Idaho on a week beginning during a holiday to talk about offers for crying out loud. This is insane that you guys are all here. So let's give him a huge round of applause. It's like, I wouldn't have believed it. So cool. Um, yeah, this, uh, I got so many fun things to talk about today. So I don't have a normal presentation. Normally I have a million slides and everything like that. Um, today I wanna do more story time. I wanna tell you guys some stories, have some fun, um, show you some cool stuff. Um, from the book that's coming out and a couple other cool things. And so that's kind of the game plan. Um, but uh, Catherine Jones just messaged me a few minutes ago. I'm not sure where you're at here. I hear, hey. And she's like, if I came all the way to Boise, Idaho, and you're going to tell at least one potato gun story, I'm going to be severely um, upset. So I didn't have a potato gun story planned, uh, but then I just thought of one a second ago. So how many of you guys want a potato gun story real quick? Yeah. All right. Anyone want to go shoot potato guns after this? Yeah. <laughs> That's the upsell. We're doing that tomorrow for anyone. No, just kidding. Um, no, it's funny. At the, we did a, a family event uh, like a month ago in Denver. Who was at the, the family event with us? Yeah. And uh, we were trying to get all these potato gun kits shipped there to be able to show the kids and like actually do that. And it's funny because I haven't sold my potato gun DVD for a decade now. And uh, we used to have this, this um, supplier that um, would drop ship the potato gun kits afterwards. And so like a week before, before the event, I was like, we should see if we can, if they still drop ship potato gun kits, we'll get them shipped to the event and it'll be amazing. And like this whole thing, so I'm getting Melanie to try to call them. They have no answer. Um, they won't return their emails, but they still have an order button on their site. So we bought them like at wholesale prices and have shipped directly to the hotel in Denver. And Melanie told me yesterday, she's like, I just got the shipping notes. They finally shipped them. So there's a whole bunch of potato gun kits getting shipped to Denver right now. So if any of you guys are there, um, you can just pick them up there. <laughs> so that's the potato gun story I got for you guys today. Um, maybe Funnel Hacking Live will do some more uh, potato gun building or something, a whole extra late night session. Um, anyway, there you go. So um, when Stephen first asked me to, to speak here, the first thing he did is he tried to make an irresistible offer. Did you guys hear about this already? Yeah. So we went through the whole process and we talked about like, well, what should I talk about? And we kind of had uh, a whole direction I wanted to go. And so I kind of started initially building my thoughts around that. But if anyone's been watching my Instagram, the last like month of my life, I've been deep trying to get this Traffic Secrets book done. And it's been, it's been a lot. Um, and it's top of my mind and a whole bunch of it's just there. And so um, I'm going to kind of do both. I'm going to talk about stuff I was going to talk about, but also go into Traffic Secrets because 
There's parts I've never taught before that I just want to like share. Um, again, I've never taught them publicly, so they may came out really bad. It could be a complete flop, but uh, I'm not getting paid, so it's cool. Um, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, anyway, so I'm going to start at the very beginning about what initially when he first asked me to speak that I really wanted to talk about, because I think it's um, applicable to, to everyone in, in, the, in your journey. And I'm curious right now, um, how many of you guys have been in this entrepreneur game, the, trying to make money on the internet, this whole, this whole world, for more than, let's say, like five years? Okay. How many of you guys have been less than five years? Less than four years? Less than three? Two? Less than one year? How many of you guys, like, you found out about this a couple days ago? And you're pumped. <laughs> Come here. This is awesome. <laughs> Can you imagine this being the first introduction? Um, and so I... <laughs> I think sometimes um, we come into these, these, uh, these rooms. I know when I first got in there, um, that's been 15, 16 years ago now, when I first learned about this world and I came into it. I remember going and hearing all these people talking about stuff and they're sharing numbers and stats. And I think I had this envision in my head that like I was going to come in and like five days later, I was going to be a kajillionaire and that was going to be the, how it worked because all these other people were doing it. And uh, I think a lot of people have that belief as well. Um, and sometimes they come in, they start working and doing the process. And if they don't get it right away, um, they fall away from it, which is... Um, which is frustrating and it's hard. And so I want to kind of just talk about uh, my journey for a little bit because um, every time I meet somebody, I always get people who are like, I've known you ever since the beginning. I'm like, oh, hey, when was that? And they're like, yeah, back when you did uh, the dot-com secrets, but ever since the very beginning. And I was like, there was, fifth, there was 10 years that I was doing this before the dot-com secrets book came out. Or it's like, yeah, all the way back to microcontinuity. Hey, who here remembers microcontinuity? Yeah. I was like, yeah, I was, I was six years in when that came out. So I've been doing this for a long, 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 long time. There's been a whole bunch of ups and downs. Um, and one of the quotes that uh, is in the new Traffic Secrets book. Woo! This is actually the dot-com secrets book. We just taped the cover. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Um. <laughs> oh, we totally did, yeah. <laughs> I had someone grab and like, I, got, I took pictures of it inside and I was like, yeah, it's literally expert secrets. So <laughs> yeah, anyway. Um, but in the Traffic Secrets book, uh, as I was writing it and researching and trying to figure out the right stuff, um, there was a quote and actually from an entrepreneur who lives here in Boise. Anyone here ever heard of ConvertKit? Yeah. ConvertKit. So uh, Nathan Barry's the founder of ConvertKit. He's the local Boisean as well. A really cool guy, someone I have a ton of respect for. And, um, and I was writing the, the chapter on publishing. I'm not going to talk a lot about publishing today, but um, he had this quote that I ended up putting in the book that just oh, meant the world to me. And I think I wanted to kind of start this way as, as I start this presentation because I want this to be the thing that's in your guys' mind as we're kind of going through this journey together. So uh, it's part of an email he wrote, and the subject line was, Endure long enough to get noticed. And he said, How many great TV shows have you discovered in season three or later? So I started watching Game of Thrones after they had released five seasons. Pat Flynn had released over uh, at least 100 episodes of his podcast before I even knew it existed. I discovered hardcore history years after Dan, Dan Carlin started producing it. This is such a common experience. There's so much content being produced that we can't possibly discover it all. So instead, we wait for the best content to float to the surface after time. If step one in building an audience is to create great content, then step two is to endure long enough to get noticed. Seth Godin is very generous with his time and will appear on almost any relevant podcast, but you have to record at least 100 episodes first. His filter is, uh, his filter is creators who have shown they are willing, enough, willing to show up consistently for a long time. Um, and so when I read that, I was just like, man, that is, it's, it's crazy. And I, I um, was talking to my wife about this the other day because it's still like this whole thing is insanely weird to us. Because like this started 15, 16 years ago when we first got married and I'm sitting there and I'm like learning about all this nerdy marketing stuff and funnels and we didn't even call them funnels back then, but I was learning about stuff and direct response marketing and reading books about headlines and, and hooks and like all this, these things I was geeking out and I would try to like talk to people about it. Like I talked to my friends and my family and my parents and my brothers and everyone like trying to explain it to them. And you're like this for me, like the most exciting thing in the world. I'd explain it to them, I'd go through them and they look at me like, oh, that sounds really nice. I mean, you guys have friends or family, when you like start talking about the stuff, they're just like, oh. You know, do you not understand what I'm talking about? Like, oh, and I freak out. I'm like, this guy did this, and this person did this. I'm telling story after story after story. All these people, all the people that I saw on other stages taught, telling their story, I tell their stories. And they're like, oh, that's really nice. I'm like, how are you nice not getting this? Like, how are you missing the energy behind this? Like, what am I doing wrong to convey this? And I would talk about it over and over and over again, and nobody seemed to care. But I cared. It was so exciting for me. And so after that, I started talking louder and eventually I had a couple kids. I was still uh, going to Boise State down the, the road. I had a couple kids in my classes who started listening and they're like, that is really, 
That's really cool. And I tell them about them. And they got excited. I tell other people. And, and so many people never, never heard me, right? I was speaking, but they never, they never heard me. I kept speaking, kept speaking, kept speaking. Um, and eventually, a couple people started hearing. And a couple more started hearing. Um, but it was slow. And the first decade of me doing this, like not, the, the, the groups were not ever big. Um, in fact, the last event I did before Funnel Hacking Live, which was probably about, probably about 10 years ago. So I'm probably seven or eight years in, I did an event. And um, we had, I think, 300 people-ish signed up for it. And I was super excited. We did it out in Salt Lake. We drove, me and our tiny team, we drove down there. We showed up. And less than 100 actually showed up after they bought tickets. And I'm in this room just like, God, like, how is this so hard? Like, this is the most exciting thing in the world to me. And I can't get people excited. Um, but I kept talking and kept talking and kept talking and kept talking because I was passionate about it. Okay, if I would have done this because I thought other people can get passionate about it, it would have withered up on the vine a long time ago. But I kept talking. And so it's so fascinating to me today that there's 650 people in Boise on a week beginning during a holiday talking about offers for crying out loud. Like, this is insane. We're going to have 5,000 people at Funnel Hacking Live all talking about funnels and about all these crazy things that are so exciting that, that people are buying books. Like, I, when I wrote this first book, Man, I can't tell you how scared I was. Um, how, many years have, how many of you guys have ever written a book before? Okay, um, anyone ever heard, uh, you guys know Ryan Holiday? He's one of my favorite authors right now. In fact, he, um, he is gonna be speaking at Funnel Hacking Live. I'm so excited. So he's written some amazing books, but my favorite of all his books is a book called Perennial Seller, uh, which is a whole book about like, how do you create content that lasts beyond the moment, right? He talked about a whole bunch of examples of movies, like what are, like movies that, that, are, that last for forever, like Star Wars, right? Like it's just going forever. Um, and then you have other ones who they make a ton of money and they die, right? And in the book, he talks about like Star Wars, like, like name some lines from Star Wars. Like everyone can, can list off some, names, some, some lines, right? Because the, the, the movie's a perennial seller. But he says, um, you know, the highest grossing movie at the time was Avatar. He said, can anyone think of a single sentence from Avatar? Can any of you guys give me a quote from Avatar? I see, I didn't even know that. I see, <laughs> we got one person who remembers the line from Avatar. Highest grossing movie, but it died, right? Okay, Friends was the same way. Friends was an amazing show. When it ended, it ended. Seinfeld has like lived on. So what's the difference in a work that, that lasts and a work that, that doesn't last? And he talks about that. And it's just an amazing book called Perennial Seller. And again, he's gonna be talking at Funnel Hack Live about, about how to create art that, that lasts beyond. It's not just a book, but art, movies, courses, whatever your thing is, like how do you create stuff that lasts beyond yourself, which is something I study because I like, I don't know, I'm, I'm in this like phase of my life where I'm obsessed with like the legacy of this whole thing. How do you, how do, you do that? Um, one thing he talked about in the book is, uh, is how interesting it is with creators where when you create something, you go into private, right? Like when I've been writing these books or doing whatever, like I'm in private in my own, in my house, studying, learning, reading, geeking out. But then when you like make it public, it's like, uh, it goes from being this, like, this private thing to this public thing. And like the fear of rejection is like the scariest thing in the world, right? Um, and so like I remember putting this out and being so scared that just like, oh, like I was so passionate, like my heart, my soul, like a decade of my life went into this and put it out there. I remember sending it to a couple of my friends and just having so much anxiety, like, oh, what if they read this and they hate it, they don't like it, like, this is, like, so important to me. We put it out there, and luckily, they liked it. Um, in fact, Rich Sheffrin, have you guys know Rich Sheffrin? He was one I was most scared to read. I dude read, like, every book on planet Earth, like, 400 times. In fact, there's a video of him on YouTube that's worth watching. Um, he shows his book writing process. He buys a book. He rips the binding off of it. Or excuse me, first up, he reads it all, highlights it. Then he cuts the binding off of it. And he scans the whole thing. He sends the scan to one of his Filipino workers. He then takes all the highlighted sections and writes them into, uh, into like a, a PDF. And then he's done that for like, I don't know, 7,000 books over, over time. And then every morning he wakes up. He's like, what am I going to study today? He's like, copywriting. He's like, these are the 30 best copywriting books of all time. Plugs in his his highlights into like a, into an iPad. He jumps on the treadmill and he'll read 30 books in the morning on whatever topic is he wants to like do that day. A dude's obsessed with like it's, and he has a whole video showing the process. It's the coolest thing in the world. I remember sending him the book and I'm just like, oh, if Rich hates it, like I am done. I'm, I'm walking away from this whole thing. Um, and I remember afterwards he called me. He was like, dude, your book? I'm like, yeah. He's like, it's really good. I was like, oh my gosh, are you serious? Like, ah, oh, that, that feeling. And so um, I'm sure a lot of you guys have ever felt that or you're gonna feel it because it's scary right? Especially if you're here, you're fired up, you're excited about the next thing, the offer, you're going to create all this stuff. But as you get in the creation mode, start putting it out there, like there's always going to be that fear of like, oh, I'm going to give it to the world and what if they reject it? Okay. And so that's just, that's going to be happening. But I want to kind of step back in my journey and I want to talk about just all the, the stuff that I, that I tried. In fact, I printed this out before I showed up here. Um, who here in this room thinks they made the most funnels? They're not like click create funnel and like demo funnel and then create, you know, and like give an 8,000 year account. 
backwards, okay? Who here has built more than 10 funnels? Like built, launched, live, like were pushed out into the world, traffic was sent to them. Who has built more than 20 funnels? More than 30 funnels? 40, 50, 60, 70? Anyone more than 70? All right. Okay. Um, I was able to find 131. Not just, not just funnels that like I played with a little bit, that we built pre-click funnels in Photoshop and front page that we built, created, launched, and went live. Here's the first couple links right here. These are the next ones here. These are the next ones here. Next one's here. Next one's here. Um, every one of these is a funnel that we created, built, launched. Um, my designers do Photoshop and I use front page because I could use front page. In fact, I use front page all the way until ClickFunnels launch for my nerds out there. You're like, what about Dreamweaver? Like, I couldn't figure out Dreamweaver. I used front page and that's all I ever did, and then ClickFunnels. Um, but these are them, 131 um, funnels that I could find. I think there's more. I'm going to try to eventually get them all and put them all in chronological order. But that's how many funnels I created over a decade and a half before I created ClickFunnels. Can I share this with you guys for a reason? Because so many of you guys are looking at me and saying, oh my gosh, Russell created ClickFunnels. Now he's making hundreds of millions of dollars. This is so cool. It didn't happen overnight, by any stretch of the imagination, okay? It happened because I kept doing it and kept doing it. I had an idea after I did, after I did, after I did, okay? Most of you guys don't have your big idea yet. You may think you do, but you don't. All these ideas, every single one of these things, I thought was my big idea. Like I put my blood, sweat, and tears into it. Like every single, every single one of these things took months to build a crate, build, write the copy, do the design, get the thing. Like it was, it was like a labor of love every single time, and most of them didn't even work. Like, how did that one not work? This is like the greatest idea I ever had. Like, potato guns, like, seriously, it's gonna be huge, right? Um, all sorts of stuff. If I, and someday I wanna, like, it'd be fun to do a whole presentation, show you guys, like, the iterations of, like, oh, I had this idea, and this is why, and this one, and this one. And it would take days, though, just to go through them all. Um, but that's, that's what I had to go through, right? And um, on this journey, as I'm doing this, like, I don't really know where I'm going. All I know is I'm just going, I'm moving, momentum forward, right? I mean, I feel like that sometimes. Like, I don't really know where I'm going, I'm just moving forward right now, hoping that something good happens. Okay, that's good. I don't know what it is, like there's something about motion and movement and forward progress that was you do that, God, the universe, whatever you want to call it, starts rewarding you for things. So as I was moving forward, I'm like, this is the greatest idea where I started doing it. It's like, ah, oh, it kind of sucks, but all of a sudden that door opened. I met that person, I found this thing. And I started moving the next thing. And I tried this, I tried this, I tried this. And all these things in this journey started as I was moving forward, new ideas, new opportunities, new people came into my world that made it possible, okay? I want to fast forward to... Um, probably eight years, eight years ago? Eight or nine years ago, seven or eight, I don't know. I'm so bad at years. Some people are like, 1996, I'm, I can never remember. I was in Kenya, that's all I remember. So I was in Kenya and, um, and uh, it was my wife and I and a whole bunch of marketing nerds um, and uh, most of them had wives too. And, and uh, this is back before there's too many female entrepreneurs. I don't think we had any female entrepreneurs on that trip. And the last time I went to Kenya, we had like half of them were female entrepreneurs, which is a huge testament to the females. I love it. It's, uh, Makes me happy every single time I see that. Um, but back then we're all hanging out and uh, I remember could, because we did this long um, ride inside of this little Jeep and it was like my wife and I and then two or three other couples and all the dudes were talking business and all the wives were like annoyed. So we got to uh, like the stop where we had lunch and then all the wives were like, do you guys mind if we go in this Jeep over here and you guys go in this Jeep because we don't want to hear you talk anymore. <laughs> right, but it's like a four hour drive. Like exactly, we do not want to go for four more hours with you guys. Like, oh, I guess like, all right, so we jump in the other Jeep. I'm sitting next to this guy named Bill Harris. Uh, Bill Harrison. Um, anyone here know Bill? A couple? You guys? Okay. Bill is um, uh, probably one of the smartest marketing dudes I've ever met. So for, for context, um, he's married now, but when I first met him, he was probably, I don't know, 50, never been married. Um, I might have got that wrong, but um, was obsessed with marketing. And like his house, I saw pictures of you going to his house. Imagine like a bachelor pad, but he's rich. So it's a big bachelor pad. And every room from the floor to the ceiling is marketing and sales books. They don't even bookshelves anymore because he can't handle it. So he's just, every single room is just piled with books. In fact, he used to send me boxes of books like his gifts. He's like, hey Brunson, I just sent you a bunch of books. And I show up and there's a, like um, a microwave box with like 500 books in it. And I'm like, are these good? He's like, oh, they're all good. I'm not gonna send you crappy books. I'm like, this is amazing. So Bill is like one of the smartest dudes I've ever met when it comes to marketing and sales, like obsessed. Like if you guys think I'm obsessed, he's like that to the next level. Like he's, he's awesome. 
Um, anyway, so we're sitting in this Jeep geeking out about all sorts of stuff, having a bunch of fun. And we're like two and a half hours into this like bumpy uh, Jeep ride talking. And uh, he tells me this story that just, um, man, it rocked everything. Like my whole, my whole world. And I'm probably, I don't know, six pages into this funnel building thing at the time. Like I've done a million different things, launched a bunch of stuff, had some successes, had a lot of losses, but as a whole, we we're doing really well. And uh, we're sitting there in this Jeep and we're talking. And uh, he says, man, it's so interesting. He's like, he's like, I feel like I've, I'm one of the best marketers in the world. He's like, Russell, I feel like you are too. Like we're like some of the best, like most passionate people who geek out about this the most. But he's like, do you know what the biggest problem is? I'm like, what? Because I would love to know, like I'm doing well, but I'd love to do more. And he's like, we have the wrong opportunity. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, and he goes on. He said, I have this friend who he's not a good marketing dude at all. Like he's, he's maybe like a level two skill set of like of being a marketer. But he um, got into this opportunity with this big company and he was able to pl- apply his level two skill set into a level 10 opportunity. He's like, they just took their company public for over a billion dollars. He cashed out and made insane amounts of money. He's like, because he had a level 10 opportunity. He's like, if I look at this, as I see in this Jeep, he's like, I feel like I've got a level 10 skill set. And my company, while it does really, really good, he's like, I feel like it's like a level three or maybe level four opportunity with level 10 skill set. So like, because I'm only able to get to a certain, a certain level. He said, the same thing's true for you, dude. He's like, you're at a level 10 skill set. You're looking at level, maybe level two, maybe level three opportunity. That's why you're stuck at this, at this thing. And I was like, oh my gosh, I never, I never thought about that. Um, and uh, I was a little frustrated. I was like, well, crap, what's my... What's my level 10 opportunity? I don't even, I don't even know what that, what that is or what it could be. Like I thought all the stuff I was doing was good. And like, if you look at the, you know, I look at the world through my lens, like, I'm doing better than all the people around me, like my friends, my family, stuff like that. I'm making more money, but like, man, like what's, what is actually possible? And, uh, and I didn't know. And I remember coming home from that trip and just thinking like, well, what's my level 10 opportunity? I didn't know, but I didn't stop everything. Like, well, I'm just gonna wait till it comes here. Okay. I was just like, okay, now I know that I'm looking for level 10 opportunity. And I want to make sure that as I, that when I find it, that I'm ready and I'm prepared for it, okay? If they would have handed me quick funnels eight, eight years ago, I'm like, here, run this thing. Guess what would have happened? I would have crashed it to the ground and burnt it, and it would have been a really bad, painful, public humiliation in front of everybody, okay? Um, I wasn't ready for it, okay? But now I knew, like, I have my eyes, I'm going for level 10 opportunity, but until that happens, I'm going to move forward. I'm going to do the next one and the next one. I'm going to try I'm gonna try this one and this one and this one and this one and this one. And hopefully in that journey, I'm gonna have faith as I'm running as fast as I can. I'm looking for opportunities. I'm trying to find stuff and figure things out that the right people are gonna come to my life. I'm gonna be introduced to people. I'm gonna find opportunities. And maybe this one's not the big success, but maybe that it opens up the door for the next one or the next one. Maybe I meet somebody through the dealer. I don't know what that's gonna be, but I'm gonna run with faith as fast as I can and just do funnel after funnel after funnel. But I'm gonna have my eyes open looking for like, what is that level 10 opportunity? Okay? Thank you. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> Um, and so that's, that's how it started. So from that point forward, I started looking. And as I started looking, these weird opportunities started coming um, into, my, into my path. And some of them weren't really um, pleasant. One of them was I built a huge company up and the whole thing burnt and crashed to the ground. Um, and that was really painful. Um, firing 80 people overnight is like, is not, not fun. And I'm not gonna get deep into the pain of that story, but it, it was bad. Um, and I thought like, man, this whole thing like, I don't have a level zero opportunity now. I got nothing, but I kept moving forward. And as I was moving forward, I was trying thing after thing after thing. And I remember uh, in this process of trying a bunch of stuff, I I, I remember buying this website because I was like, um, this is, this has got to be level 10 opportunity. I bought this site. It's called championsound.com. Anyone here ever heard of Champion Sound? No, because it never, one person. Yeah. Because it's one of the ones on the list. Um, It didn't do anything though. Um, I bought it off flippa.com. I tried to launch it. It didn't work. We had some people sign up, start buying it. The software crashed. It was like an email and text message autoresponder for bands. And I was like, oh, I thought this was gonna be level 10 opportunity. Maybe they, you know, and I'm doing this thing. And um, in the pain of this thing not working, um, I was trying to find a developer to help me fix this, help me fix this, this software. And I'd go to, to what was back then? Up, Upwork or Oland, Odesk, or I can't remember what. I was trying to find um, somebody to hire to fix the, the site. And I was trying thing after thing and I couldn't find anybody to fix it. And finally, I was just frustrated. I'm like, all right, this isn't gonna work. And so um, I sent an email to the, to the host to basically shut down the site. It's not going to work. Like, I don't want to support the people because it doesn't work. I can't fix it. And then I was walking out the door to leave. And as I'm walking out the door, I had this like thought. And the thought I just heard for a second, it said, um, there's probably someone on your list who could fix this for you. I'm like, my list? Like, my list isn't that big. It's not people that are developers. It was just like, but I'm like, all right, I've tried to listen when I hear voices like that. Like, all right, let's, so I walk back in the office. I turn my computer back on. I send an email out and it says, um, if you know Ruby on Rails, I'm looking for a partner. 
And I kind of told him the story. I got the site. It's not working. It's broken. I'm going to throw it away. But if you know Ruby on Rails and be a partner, email me back. So I sent it out there. And uh, an hour later, I get an email from this dude in Atlanta who uh, looks like he's younger than me, which is kind of funny. So he's got a beard. Um, and, uh, and I click on it and read this thing. He's like, I'm a Ruby and Rails developer, and um, I'd love to, to look at it. So I send the login. He logs in. Uh, I go to bed, and I wake up in the morning. He's like, all the, all the issues are fixed. Um, here you go. And that was Todd Dickerson, who, uh, who came into my world. And what's crazy, um, yes, yeah, hey, Todd. Um, Todd, uh, it's, it's fascinating because um, Todd came into my world at the bottom of everything, like, like, like broke, broke, like out of money, nothing left. And he came in and... Um, and uh, he came in a, in a weird spot. He's like, you know, I, I want to come work with you. And I'm like, I can't pay you. He's like, that's cool. I'll just work for free. And he worked for free for over a year coming in because he was just like the same thing. Like, I'm looking for an opportunity. I'm looking for an opportunity. And so we're like a year into this relationship, friendship, uh, working on different projects. And uh, we went to traffic conversion event together. And uh, I can tell how, I remember how broke we were because we shared a room. <laughs> this is probably seven years ago now. So we're sharing a room. And uh, that night, uh, we're walking around, hanging out, and I see Bill Harrison, and we, and we bump into each other again. We start talking, and somehow in this conversation, the whole level 10 opportunity thing came up again, which was kind of random, because it's just like, a, like a, a freak thing. We talked for like 15 minutes, and we left. And it reminded me of this thing in Kenya that happened a couple years earlier. I was like, oh my gosh, I forgot about that. And so that night, I told Todd, I was like, look, this is the deal. Like, um, I told him I did, I just told you guys about level 10 opportunity. And Todd's like, dude, well, what's our level 10 opportunity? I'm like, I don't know. Do you know? He's like, no. I'm like, crap, we got to figure this thing out. And then we're like, oh my gosh, I know exactly what it is. It's this thing, and it's going to be called WP Undies. And we got the WordPress logo, and we got someone to design it with underwear, tidy whities on it, and we're freaking out excited. And Todd started coding this thing, and it's one of the things on this list down here. Uh, I'm not sure which page it is. But we're like, dude, this is like, this is the big idea. It's going to be this thing that you put on your WordPress site, like underwear, that helps protect it. And like a third of all the websites in the world are on WordPress. It's going to be the huge, like it's going to be insanely big. And so we're so freaking out about our level 10 opportunity. We start working, we start building this thing and we're doing it. And as we're building it, we find out that like it's WordPress sucks because <laughs> um, you plug in it up, you plug in a thing and then it could be on like 8,000 different hosts and like somebody shifts the hosting over here, over here. And like after we got the thing out there, we're trying to support like five customers. We're like, oh my gosh, this is the worst business we ever were in. Like this is not our level 10 opportunity. <laughs> um, we start freaking out and we're not sure what to do. And Todd's flying back to Boise to plan like, okay, what's the next thing we're going to do? And on the flight over, uh, Todd's in Atlanta, lives in Atlanta. He's in the airport. Like it, I don't know. I was still asleep here in Boise. And um, <clears throat> uh, it was the same day. Some of you guys haven't heard the story before. It was the same day that Lead Pages got $5 million in funding. And so Todd's jumping on a plane, reads this article, and then he forwards it to me. And he jumps in the air. He's in the air for four hours flying to Boise and he's flying. He's just livid. Because Todd is like the most genius developer in the world, and he knows that lead pages sucks. And he's like, I can build this today. And so I wake up in the morning, and I read this article, I'm like, lead pages? Like, that software sucks. Like, I, like we could build this today. He shows up at the office, he walks in, like little Todd is all angry, like, oh, I'm like, what? He's like, lead pages got $5 million. Like, what are they doing that we're not doing? I'm like, I don't know. He's like, I can build lead pages today. Do you want to build it? I'm like, yes, we're going to build lead pages. We're going to take them out. We're like, all excited, right? Like, this is our level 10 opportunity. We'll get $5 million in funding too. It's going to be awesome. And so we're so excited. And then uh, Todd asked this question. He's like, well, if we're getting set up from the ground up, do you want to make it better than lead pages? I'm like, heck yeah. He's like, what do you want? And I'm like, oh my gosh, are you serious? Um, let me show you. And I started showing him all of these. Like, I want to be able to do this by myself without you guys because you guys are way too, I, I want to be able to do this. I can't do Photoshop and front page and all these people to do this. Um, and, uh, and that started this journey on... Um, Click funnels. So let me show you guys real quick. Um, if you can pull my slides up. Uh, level 10 opportunity. Um, uh, and this is kind of a side story. Before, somewhere in this journey here, um, actually before I even met Todd, um, it wasn't like click funnels was a unique idea. Um, I, I wasn't the first person to think like, we should build software that makes it easy to build funnels. Like I wasn't the first person. In fact, this was in 2005. This was the first time I tried to build it. And we called it click.com.com. .com. That would have been confusing, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I would tell people that, like, so click.com? And they're like, no, no, click.com.com. Like, wait, so, you, wait, what? I'm like, no, it's, anyway. But this is the first time, so I was like, 
if we could build this, it'll be huge. And so that was here in Boise. Um, I ended up hiring six developers. I was selling all of this crap, and I was trying to take all the money to build this. I'm like, this, I thought it was going to be huge. 2005, so this is like almost 10 years earlier, we tried this. Um, and this is all different pages. If you look at it, it's kind of funny because I think we called it, a, it was before sales funnels. We called them sales processes and sales flows before we ever called them funnels. Um, but we had built the whole software. We had we designed it. We tried to build it. And it didn't, it's funny because I talk about how like, if I would have got click funnels um, 10 years ago, I wouldn't have been able to do it. And that's what happened. Like the, we tried it 10 years ago before I had Todd. I didn't have the right people. Um, and it crashed and burned. Again, we spent man, probably two or three years trying to build this, ran out of money. During that whole crash, we, we gave up on it. And that's why when I did meet Todd and, uh, and I asked him, like, can we build it? I was just like, part of me was like, I've tried it before. I know other people have tried it. I had a lot of other uh, business partners, not business partners, but friends who sat down like, and tried it as well. And it just, didn't, it just didn't work, right? It was a good idea that just wasn't simple to do. Um, but we met Todd um, and then Dylan and made it possible. So this is 131 funnels later. This is the night that we started on the ClickFunnels project. It's the only picture I have from that night. Like, I wish we would have done more. Um, so this Todd here on the right-hand side. So he has no Todd. On the left-hand side is Dylan. And Dylan is no longer part of ClickFunnels, but he was one of the original uh, co-founders with us. Uh, Dylan's the one who built the original editor. So if any of you guys like the editor, um, that's Dylan's brainchild. He'd spent um, six or seven years prior build, trying to build a website editor for himself. We started building ClickFunnels. We partnered together and plugged it all into one, uh, one super system. Um, but I wanted to share this story with you guys because um, as soon as we were aware of a level 10 opportunity, our eyes started looking for it, but we didn't stop. Okay, and I just want, hopefully it gives some, um, a lot of you guys out here, especially ones who have you know, been doing this for a year or less than that or a couple of years, who just haven't hit it yet or you've had like marginal successes, like don't, don't stop. Like the key is not waiting for the big opportunity. I'm waiting for my click funnels. It's do your thing as fast as you can and keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. And as you keep doing it, you'll get better and you'll get better and you'll get better. And eventually you'll get worthy enough that when the level 10 opportunity shows up, you'll be prepared for it. Okay, that's the key. Okay, so don't get upset like, oh, my funnel didn't work. Oh, this thing didn't work. Or oh, like, it's gonna be tough. There's gonna be frustrations. Things aren't always gonna work the very first time or the second time or the third time. But if you keep doing it and keep doing it, for me, it was 131 times, okay, before I hit my big thing. And I'm hoping for you guys, you get a lot faster than that. Um, okay, but even if you don't, it's worth it. Okay, I'm now, man, 16 years in this business. And, you know, it's funny because I get people all the time, they're like, you guys just came out of nowhere. And it's like, yeah, 16, that's a long time I've been focusing on this. But it's something I've been obsessed with and I just kept doing it and kept doing it and kept doing it. And when you keep doing your thing, the opportunities appear, they show up. And if you've done that, done the work, you'll be prepared and ready for them. Okay, so that's the first thing I want to share today. All right, I'm going to transition for a few minutes. Is that cool? Yeah. All right. So next thing I want to talk to you guys about, how many of you guys here create some kind of content? Almost everyone. Who doesn't? You should be. <laughs> Someday you will. Um, I want to talk to you guys about my process. I'm going to talk about um, frameworks here for a minute. And I'm going to talk about this. I want to give you, I want to set up just as you guys are creating your own stuff. And then I'm going to um, show you the framework that I've been building the Traffic Secrets book through. So it's going to be kind of like a dream inside of a dream like thing, which would be kind of fun. So, um, so if you look at any kind of creation, um, it all comes based off of some, uh, off the back of a framework, right? Um, and the people that do the best in this business, they create their own frameworks, their own systems, their own processes, things like that, right? That's, that's like the unique thing that you have that nobody else can have. And so um, when you create the framework, um, like that, that I, I think about this, like with these three books, um, the dot-com secrets book, if you look through this and you flip through the pages, like all these little doodles are my frameworks, right? It's my framework for how I find my dream customers, my framework for how I get traffic, my framework uh, for each of my funnels, the value. Like these are all frameworks that it's like when I, I learned all this stuff from a bunch of people and then I put them into like a concept I can understand, like these became my frameworks. These became my frameworks for how I sell and how I present online. This is the frameworks that I have for traffic, right? My business is basically, I create these frameworks and then I share the frameworks, right? That's the education business. Okay, the software, my software takes my frameworks into a way that makes it simple for other people to do. But it's just the frameworks are, are my thing, right? Like that's, that's the unique thing we have. I had a chance to go to Stacey and Paul Martino's event um, like a month ago, two months ago? When was that? Whenever the event was. And it was so cool. I can't remember what you said. There was something when you're like, because uh, you don't call it framework. So what do you, you call it? Um, your, pro yeah, your process. She's like, 
She's like, I'm gonna teach you the concept real quick and I've got a five-step process for that. And next thing, I'm gonna teach this. And I've got a seven-step process for that. And like, they're all giggling because like all the people that are her, her tribe know that for everything Stacey's gonna teach, she's got a framework, she's got a process, she's got a thing that she's gonna walk you through, okay? And you watch their businesses blowing up like crazy right now. Why? Because they've got, a, they've got processes and frameworks, okay? If you don't have those yet, like start developing them. Like that's the big secret, okay? Um, you look at Stephen, like Stephen came into, into this world, read my books, got stuff like, learn my frameworks. And from that was like, hey, like, like, what's his thing? Like, what's he gonna do? He started developing. He started going, like, he picked the piece that got him the most excited was, were offers, right? And he said, I'm gonna geek out on offers. And he went deep. <sighs> like, so deep. How many of you guys were off mine last, a year ago? He went even deeper a year ago, right? It was like, oh, this tunnel that's so deep, right? But Steve went down this deep tunnel, geeking out, studying, like, obsessing about everything. And from that arose from with his own frameworks. These are the frameworks. This is how I see the world. This is what I wanna share with people. This is how I can serve. Now there's 650 people here in Boise learning his frameworks, learning his processes, right? Okay, there's patterns of this. Watch all the best people, okay? I look at all the people that, like the Funnel Hacking Live people, the people that I have speaking on, on stages often, right? Garrett White, what did Garrett do? Okay, went through a horrible uh, near divorce with his wife, everything fell apart, okay? Became a mess, figured this whole thing out, figured out the systems, the frameworks, the processes to pull himself out of this thing, and then took these frameworks, and that became Warrior. It's launched this huge mass movement around the world, right? I can look at almost every single speaker. If you look at them, the one thing they have that's unique and the reason why they're successful in their markets is because they have a framework, okay? So there's the first 10. If you guys don't have a framework yet, like that's your job. Geek out on whatever it is you're doing. So obsessively, you start looking at patterns and stuff, figure out like, what's your framework? It doesn't have to be a doodle like mine. It can be a six step process, a framework, like, but it's, it's, it's your own like, it's, it's the thing that you, you, you teach off of. I remember, um, I was, at a, uh, I was at Dean Gracios and Joe Polish's $100,000 mastermind group, and uh, we we're hanging out, and um, Brendan Bouchard came up, and he mapped out his seven-day launch funnel. And he taught at Funnel Hacking Live. How many of you guys saw his presentation on seven-day launch funnel? Yeah. So I remember he mapped out this, this framework, and he, had, like, he, he drew it first. He's like, da 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 He's like, uh, okay. And then he's like, how long do I got? And they're like, uh, you got 30 minutes today. Cool. All right, so you start teaching. And he's like, took the first part of the framework and taught that. They taught the second part and the third part and the fourth part. And then he was talking and he got kind of confused for a second. He's like, uh, hold on. Oh yeah, I'm right here. And then he picked back up and he said something that he said, like as an afterthought. He said, the, your framework becomes your savior. It's the thing you just come back to. You get stuck, you get lost, you come back to it, right? But that becomes the whole thing. And the cool thing about a framework is you take a framework like that and I could teach the seven day launch, like I could teach Brendan's, uh, his seven day launch framework. I could teach it in five minutes if I need to or I could do a three day event on it if I needed to right? So I can take the framework, I can expand it, I can shrink it, I can do things like that, okay? So as you start developing these frameworks, then you can start practicing. Like, I'm going to do a podcast episode about this framework and teach it, okay? And then maybe I'm going to do an event teaching it. I'm going to do a longer course, and there's a whole bunch of things you can do, okay? But the framework is the unique thing you, that you have that you can create, right? So that's number one. Now, after you have a framework, I want to walk through the process I do to teach the framework to make it impactful so people listen, they remember, and they'll actually use what you're talking about. How many of you want to learn about that? Okay. So there's a couple of different pieces. Let me show you my framework for teaching frameworks. Oh, did you guys just catch that? Okay. <laughs> Wait, I practice what I preach? Yes, I do every single time. Okay. Okay, so the very first part, when I have my framework, right? Um, in fact, how many of you guys know what this framework is? Here's, here's the pop quiz for who's actually paying attention to me. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, perfect webinar framework, okay? All right, so I teach my, when I do my frameworks, <clears throat> the very first thing I teach always, let's say I'm gonna teach this piece of the framework, okay? The very first thing I wanna teach is I wanna teach people how I either learn that or how I earn that. How I learned it, how I earned it. One of the mistakes people make when they're teaching is they get them and say, okay, let me teach you step number one of the process. The first step you're gonna do is blah, 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 blah. Okay, you missed your opportunity. You always notice whenever I talk about a topic, I explain to you how I learned it, how I earned it. I didn't come up here and start saying, let me tell you about level 10 opportunities. I took you guys on a journey for about 15 minutes telling you a story about myself in Kenya with Bill Harrison, and then from there to Traffic Secrets. Why did I do that? Because when I do that, when I teach you how I learned it or how I earned it, then it increases the value of the thing I'm about to share with you. If I just would start level 10 opportunities, you guys would be like, cool, like, why is Ross talking about this? Like, let's go, come on, let's keep going. Like, what's the next step? Okay, but I explain how I learned it, how I earned it, and all of a sudden that story is what creates the value in the thing that I'm about to deliver. If I don't explain that stuff first, then you lost it, like you missed the whole point. 
Okay, I'm gonna give you the nugget and you're not gonna, you're not gonna respect it, you're not gonna care about it because you didn't have to earn it or learn it. Okay, so I'm showing you by, by, by me about, I'm about to give you this amazing thing. Let me explain to you how I learned it, how I earned it. And all of a sudden, like, you start valuing, like, man, I'm glad I didn't have to go through all that stuff. Like, Russell had to go through a bunch of pain. It cost him a lot of money, to, a lot of whatever to earn this. I'm just getting it. So now I'm really excited. Okay, that's always the first step. How I learned it, how I earned it. The, the second piece then is then you teach the strategy. Okay, so let me explain to you guys the strategy. So this is the perfect webinar. Here's the strategy on how it works. Okay. This is what it is. So that'll teach the strategy of the thing. Okay. So if I'm teaching the strategy, um, uh, let's see. I could teach the strategy of uh, story. I teach any of the things. The strategy behind it. Okay. So you have the strategy, and then the second thing we teach is the tactics. So strategy is this is what you do. The tactics are the, here's how you actually do it. Okay, so the what and the how, that's the big difference. Okay, some people go directly into the how, and when you just teach the how, you, you miss the, you don't understand like the big picture. Right, strategy, here's the big picture, this is, this is what it is, this is, and they get a bigger understanding of that, and then, okay, now you see that, and I'm walking through the how to actually do it, the tactics, the step by step by step by step, okay? If you don't teach the what, then the how, you get lost in the weeds, you don't really know where you're going. Okay, and the last piece then is then you teach or you show them an example of this process working for somebody else, and that gives them belief. Okay, so there you go. Learn, earn, strategy, tactics, and, and belief. <coughs> um, so I wanted to share that, because that's how I teach all of my, my frameworks. I did a podcast on this a couple weeks ago, um, if you want to geek out a little deeper on it. Um, but uh, it's interesting, if you look at any podcast episode I do, uh, that I do, I go through this process. First, the podcast is like, what's up, it's Russell, blah, 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 I'm driving around. All right, let me tell you a story. I tell a story about something that happened, and I'm like, this is what I learned. Okay, so here's the overarching strategy. Tell them what it is, and we walk through the process. First thing I do is this, second thing, third thing, fourth thing, and then I told so-and-so, and they did it, and it was amazing too. Boom. Okay, it's a five-minute podcast that I do. When I do a 90-minute presentation, it's the same thing, right? And when I do a three-day event teaching the perfect webinar, it's the same thing. I do this process over and over and over again, okay? I do it for this right here. Let me talk about the big domino, okay? Here's how I learned it. Here's a strategy behind it. Here's how you actually do it, okay? And then here's five people that did it and it worked for them, cool? All right, here's secret number one, okay? Let me just explain how I figured this piece out. Here's the story of how I learned it, how I earned it. Here's the strategy, how it works. Here's the tactics, okay? Then here's, let me tell you some stories about belief. Boom, I go through the same process, same process, and I go through that over and over and over again, okay? And again, depending how much time, if I have a little bit of time, five minutes, I'm gonna do that, this whole process on the whole thing. If I've got three days, I'm going every single chunk and I'm going deep, going through that four step process over and over and over and over and over and over again, okay? Do you guys see how I just did that again? Yeah. Okay, just wanna make sure, because I'm getting lost in the steps too. Yeah. All right. Okay, so there's the frameworks, okay. So I wanna show that because a couple of reasons. Number one is to help you guys as you're teaching or coaching. But number two is I wanna kind of walk you through some of the traffic secret frameworks. Uh, and I wish, again, the book, <laughs> so just put it in perspective. So this book, 58,000 words, it's a lot of words. It's a lot of words. This book was 60,000 words. The traffic secrets book right now is over 90,000 words. <sighs> it's a lot, I'm tired. Um, but there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of ways to get traffic. Do you guys know that? <laughs> And so I was like, man, do I teach every way on, on planet Earth to get traffic? I was like, no, I want to teach a framework that people can take and plug in any source, right? Because traffic is like the least evergreen thing of all time. So I'm like, if I teach people, here's how to use Facebook ads today, and the publisher prints the book and we ship them out, I'm like, wait, wait, hold on. Oh, it, it all changed. Crap. So I was like, instead, I have to teach a framework that people can take and they can plug into TikTok. Or they can plug it into Twitter, they can plug it into um, whatever the new thing is that's coming out tomorrow, right? So the book is all about frameworks that, that, that supersede just the, an example of a network, okay? So I'm gonna walk you through some of my traffic secrets frameworks. Um, I'm gonna go kind of touch really lightly on section one, and then I'm gonna go a little deeper on section two with you guys, and I think Steve and I are gonna do some Q&A, and we might go deeper into section three. It's three sections of the book, okay? All right, so I'll give you guys, this is, this is the, the original framework, and anyone, we did a, the Two Comma Club X coaching program, we did a, a Traffic Secrets event man, over a year ago now. Was anyone there at that event? Cool. So this is what I basically taught that event. So again, I did a three day, uh, two-day event on this. Um, I'm going to talk about it in over about five minutes, just to kind of give you guys a quick catch you up. Because I don't want to go deep on this right now. I want to go deep on section two, because I've never talked about section two. Is that cool? Yeah. Okay, but I want to make sure we're all on the same page. So section number one uh, of the Traffic Secrets book. The first step we have to do is to figure out 
Um, who is your dream customer? Okay, the whole first chapter is chapter one, who is your dream customer? And again, I'm not gonna go deep in that right now, just know that if you pick the wrong customer, your life will be miserable and you'll hate yourself for forever. You pick the right customer, you will enjoy it, okay? You pick the right customer, this whole business becomes super fun because you get to hang out with people who actually like, you get to serve them and you get to see their success. So it's all about figuring out who your dream customer is. Number two is figuring out where are those people congregated, okay? Because I want to sell something to wrestlers. All the wrestlers congregate together in one spot. If I want to sell uh, things to people who build potato guns, they're all in one spot. If I want to sell uh, things to people who like offers, you're all in one spot here together, okay? So I'm not looking like, who are my dream customers and where are they congregating online? There's tons of places they can congregate, right? So the next question is like, well, who's, who's already pre-congregated them for us, okay? Danny did an amazing talk yesterday about Dream 100, okay? And that's where this whole step comes in. It's like, okay, who already has my customer on Facebook? Who are all the people that have my dream customers on Facebook. Okay, I'm gonna start going through. Okay, well, I know that this person, this person, this person, I'm listing out every single person I can think of that has my dream customers on Facebook. And I'm gonna do the same on Instagram, and on podcasts, and on Google, and on YouTube, and on Pinterest. How many of you guys have actually done that? How many of you guys have not just heard me, or Dana, or Steven, or people talk about this, but have actually done this process before? Oh, that's step one. <laughs> to the entire business, by the way, not just traffic, okay? If you want to figure out your level 10 opportunity, the best thing to do is walk into the market and be like, there's a thousand people selling stuff. Where do I fit in this different? Because if I'm doing the same thing as like eight other people, it gets really, it's a lot harder. Okay, so just a thought. Starting with Dream 100 is the best place to start a business. Look at the ecosystem, okay? What are all the other people doing? So that's step number one. Like these people all have, congre have already congregated my, my people together. Okay, that's step number one. Now, after I figured out uh, all these different places, like let's say, for example, on Facebook, the left-hand corner, that one down there circled, let's say that's Tony Robbins, right? And he's got 3.9 million people that follow him on Facebook as of today. Okay, so he's one of those people there. Okay, and then on podcasts, those are different podcasters. Um, Instagram, right? So I have these lists of all these different people. And if I add up all those people, it's like, man, if I look at like, all my Dream 100, like the, the pool, of, the pond of people is like hundreds of millions of people, right? So I build that out first so I know, okay, these, these are the pawns of like all my dream customers. This is where they're at. Now I gotta figure out how to get into those. Like how do I infiltrate those customers and then I get them to come follow me and buy my stuff, right? That's the next step. So there are two core ways we do that. Number one is we try to earn our way in traffic that we earn, okay? So the question is like, well, how do we get, how do we earn our way in? How do we get that traffic, okay? Um, and I share this story in the book. I share it at Dana's Dream 100 event a year, year a little over a year ago as well, but um, just kind of put it into perspective. If you think about this, like when a new movie comes out, um, Hollywood does this better than, than anybody. In fact, last night I saw the new trailer for Joker. Have you guys seen the trailer yet? Oh my gosh, if you haven't yet, it is like insane. So the new Joker movie, it's the prequel to like, how did the Joker become the Joker? So it's really dark and creepy and like will scare you and you won't be able to sleep at night. Um, but I was like, oh my gosh. So that movie's coming out in October. Joaquin Phoenix, is, Joaquin Phoenix, I said it right? He is the Joker. So what will happen is about a week before um, the movie goes live, they know that they've got to get a whole bunch of people in the box office that weekend. If they don't get them in the box office that weekend, then if the initial weekend sales are bad, the whole thing it just like crashes, crashes and burns. If initial weekend's big, then, it, like, then the next weekend gets bigger and then it goes international and like, that's how they make all the money. So that first weekend the movie's comes out, they have to go crazy. No, right? So what you'll see is the week leading up to opening weekend, Joaquin Phoenix is going to go work his way into all the dream customers, okay? To all the Dream 100. So his Dream 100 are Jimmy Fallon, The Today Show, Good Morning America, Tonight Show, Late Show, um, all the shows that have all the people, right? And he will be on every single one of those shows talking about this movie that's coming out this weekend. You've got to be on it. And he's earning his way in, okay? You guys see this every single night if you watch late night TV or early TV or daytime TV or whatever. Okay, when a new movie's coming out, what are they doing? They're hitting the circuits and doing the work, right? They're earning their way in. Okay, so for you guys, it's the same thing. Like, how do I get people in? How do I earn my way in? Well, maybe you're not gonna get on tonight's show. Um, if you can, let me know, because I'll come with you and tag along. That'd be so much fun. Um, um, but like, I can't get on those shows. So instead, right, I look at like, my Dream 100. I'm like, okay, what's the equivalent of that for me? Okay, well, there's 200 podcasters in my market. Let me go see if I, which one of those podcasts that I can get on their show. Cause I got my new funnel coming out. I got my new webinar coming out. I got my new offer coming out. Let me go work my way in. And I call all the podcasters and I pitch me on their show. Then I go on my Facebook and get all the Dream 100 and Facebook to have my customers. I was like, hey, can I do a Facebook Live on your page? Hey, can I do this thing? I got this funnel coming out. Can I do a Facebook Live? And I'm earning my way in to every single thing. Okay, that's my first step. It's funny to me because um, 
I see so many people in our community who spend all this time, they build the most amazing funnel ever and they hire somebody to run Facebook ads for them. They're like, it's not working. Why am I not making any money? Okay, guess how many years of this I did before I bought my first um, Facebook ad or first paid ad? Any guesses? 11 years. 11 years from my first paid ad. Yeah, we're going like, we gotta buy paid ads first. Like, yeah, you should. Like, that paid ads are awesome, but especially if you're tight on money, don't start with paid ads. Do the circuits. Go listen, go download every single podcast in your market and call every single one of those people and keep calling them, calling them, calling them until they book you on the show. Most podcast hosts are looking for people to put on the show. If you've got an interesting story, they'll put you on the show. If you don't have an interesting story, it's time to go get an interesting story. Do something amazing. Do something awesome, okay? Get a good story and then go pitch it to the shows. And they do the same thing on Facebook and the same thing <clears throat> um, on Instagram and Google, like all these different places. Like go and work your way in, okay? We didn't have Facebook back when I got started, okay? Google worked for a little while and they shut down all of our ads. So I had to work my way in all these different networks, okay? And I do that by calling people, getting to know them. And this is hard for me. I'm super introverted. I hate the phone. To this day, the only person I'll answer the phone for is my wife. Because like, every time it rings, I'm like, oh, nothing good's on the other side of that. Like, oh, scares me so bad. But guess what Russell did? <sighs> hey, what's up, man? Oh, I love what you do. You're so great. Blah, 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 blah. Build them up. Um, if you're looking for, for, for a, a host on, or a guest on your show, like I have this really cool thing to talk about, let me know. Really? All right, cool. Boom, book a show. Guess what I did by myself for a long time. It scared the crap out of me, but I knew I had a message. I had to get out there. And so I earned my way in. That's okay, step number one. Step number two now, as you are in the process of trying to earn your way and getting on the shows and these different things and networking and do that kind of stuff to get all the free traffic, okay? This is when we say, okay, well, like, how can we stimulate this? How can we grow faster? Okay, and this is when we start saying, well, let's, let's, how, can we, how can we buy our way in? Let's get on these shows. Let's, let's buy ads. Let's do things like that. Okay, um, it's, uh, oh, I'm gonna blank out his name right now. Jordan Harbinger. So Jordan Harbinger, anyone know who he is? Harbinger, Harbinger, I can't say it right. Uh, he had a, a podcast called The Art of Charm. And it's crazy because it was one of the biggest podcasts. We're getting like 4 million plus downloads a month, or uh, yeah, a month. And him and his business partner got in a fight and he got kicked out. And his business lost, lost the whole podcast, like gone. And uh, I remember the first time I heard him, he was on, the mix, he was on Mixergy. And he was doing on Mixergy. He was talking about how he built this podcast in the past, but they kicked him out. He's telling a story. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is horrible. But I really connect this guy. This is a really cool story. And he's like, yeah, they kicked me off. So I started my new podcast called The Jordan Harbinger Show. And uh, you guys should come, you know, if you, like, if you like me, you should come subscribe. And then I saw him right after that. He went from Mixergy to Eat Entrepreneur Fires, the next one. And I started listening to all the podcasts I listened to. Jordan did the circuits. Boom, 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 boom. Hit every single one across the, across the board. And within three months, he got over 3 million downloads on his new podcast. And then what's crazy, my second favorite podcast is called Business Wars. I'm listening to Business Wars. Anyone here listen to Business Wars? Oh, for the rest of you guys, you're so lucky. You've never heard of it. Okay, sorry, this is a timeout. Oh my gosh. Okay, so Business Wars, it's like a published, it's like a, it's like a real like TV series. They pick two businesses that have gone to war, like uh, Mac versus PC, or Coke versus Pepsi, or DC versus Marvel, and they produce like an eight, seven or eight episode radio show. And it's like a professional narrator, there's like sound effects, like they're in the bar, you hear the cups in the background, and like <laughs> the best stories ever about the best business wars ever. Anyway, oh my gosh, like you can go download them all on your flights home, it's gonna change your life. <laughs> so I've listened to all of them more than once, and. Oh, so like that should be school for kids. Like it's history and it's business and it's like everything all wrapped into one. Um, in fact, you have my permission to have your kids drop out of school and just listen to that podcast and they're good. <laughs> they don't need anything else. That and the three books, click phones account, they're good to go. <laughs> anyway, um, but uh, so what's interesting is I'm listening to that and all of a sudden one of the episode ends and all of a sudden this episode pops in and it's like, hey, this is the business wars. We have a special episode from one of our friends named Jordan Harbinger. He's got a really cool podcast we think you guys should all listen to. In fact, we're going to show some highlights, uh, some of our favorite highlights from his episode. And they, they plug in like four or five clips from his show with call to action between all of them as a standalone episode in Business Wars. I know it's even possible. He bought an episode in the middle of all their episodes of them just pitching him, playing the greatest hits of his thing. So he's earning his way into everybody else's podcast and he buys his way in like that as well. And he's gotten out one of the biggest podcasts again that fast since last time we all hung out, like fast, okay? But that's the game. So you find your dream 100, who's already congregated your dream customers, you figure out how do you earn your way in, how do you buy your way in, and then the last step, 
Um, if you followed me for any amount of time, you know I geek out on this, but like the most important part of your business is your list, right? It's the traffic you own, it's your own customers. Okay, so when I'm going and I'm earning traffic, I'm trying to get them to come into my funnels to join my list because then I control that traffic, right? When I'm buying ads, I drive them to my funnel so they join my list so I have control of it. Okay, and so the goal is to get your own list. Like that's the magic. Okay, um, uh, God, I talk too much. I was gonna go deep. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna pick up. I was like, I only have like 12 slides. I'm, not gonna, I'm gonna last like 15 minutes. I'm already like an hour in. I'm so sorry. Um, is this good though? You guys liking this? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So the big thing is I like, build a list, right? And the list is like, for any of you guys wondering, that's, that's the big secret sauce of internet marketing. Okay, funnels are cool, but the reason why I have funnels is to build lists. Like, that's it. Offers are awesome, but we have an offer. We'll build a plug into a funnel so we can build a list so we can have a list. Like, that's, that's it. Welcome to this world. Like, now you have a list, game over. Okay, if you focus on like building a list, that's how you win this game. I had a friend told me that initially. He's like, the bigger your list is, the more money you'll make. And he told me at the time, he's like, you'll make $1 per month for na every name on your email list. And I didn't, I just believed him. I'm like, all right, sweet. So I'm like, okay, so when I get 10,000 people on my list, it means I'm making $120,000 a year. If I get 100,000 people on my list, it's 1.2 million. If I get a million people on my list, it's 12 point whatever million. And I was like, okay, it's on like Donkey Kong. Went out there, started building lists as quick as you could, okay? And so that's like, that's the secret. When you build a list, you control traffic. Like this game becomes really, really easy. So I'm gonna move on because I haven't gotten to the next section. Is that cool? But that's, that's section one of the book, okay? Who's your dream customers? Where are they congregating? congregating, who's already congregated them, that's your dream 100, and then after you have your dream 100, how do we earn our way in and buy our way in to get those traffic from those sources and plug them into our funnel so now they join our list, and now we have this magic list that will make us money for the rest of our life. That's, chat, that's section one of the book, okay? All right, whew. All right, so I wanna transition now to section two of the book, and this is where I've never, I literally, outside of me um, writing this, um, I've never talked about this, so it's, I wanna make sure that it, uh, it makes sense, so. I had to submit the final manuscript on Friday, so if this doesn't make any sense, I have to go rewrite it tonight. So hopefully, hopefully this makes sense. Um, all right, so the, my goal with this was to teach a framework that then you could use in any advertising platform, okay? And so I teach the framework in the book, and then we show how to do it on, um, on, uh, on Facebook, then Instagram, the two biggest um, social, and then I show you Google and YouTube, the two biggest search, and I'll show podcasting because I thought that would be fun too. So I show it five different times, but then I come back and I share like this pattern though, you can use it on Twitter, on LinkedIn, on TikTok, on, on Pinterest, on like you can use it anywhere you want. When new, when new networks come in the future, you can use it. When Facebook gets shut down because they're a huge monopoly and the government's scared of them because they're about to take them over, then it'll be fine. It'll still work no matter what's gonna happen, okay? So that's the game plan. So I'm gonna walk you through the framework. Sound good? Okay, so here's the framework. First step in the framework, you have to understand the history of the network that, we're, that you're going into and the goals of the network, okay? If you don't understand the history, it gets really hard to understand where they're going because these things are shifting and changing all the time, okay? So you have to understand the history, like where, like where did this come from? What's happening, okay? Um, anyone here ever play on Google, try to figure out Google how it works, okay? If you wanna figure out Google ads, paid ads, SEO, things like that, you have to understand like, like when they created Google, like, how, like, what, was the, like what was the history behind it? Okay, um, and I was writing the book, I, I, I go through the history of all the networks, it's fascinating, like um, Larry and Sergey, who started Google, um, when they started it, it was actually, um, it wasn't called Google, anyone know what it was called back in the day? Start with a B, back, back rub. Back rub. Back rub. Rub your back. <laughs> Is that weird? And they had an idea. They're sitting, I think it was Stanford, it was Stanford or Harvard, anyway, one of the fancy pants schools. And they're sitting there and they said, yeah, it's really annoying searching for things because the only way, if you remember back pre-Google, the way that, that sites were indexed is they, they were random or you paid to be indexed. So you would pay Yahoo to index you higher. So it was basically like people had more money would index you higher and you'd be ranked high because you paid more money. And so like all of the trashy people who paid more money would jump to the top and like good stuff just wasn't there. And uh, Larry and Sergey had this thought. They thought, I bet you that if we change the algorithm to back rub, the, the concept of back rub is like, you rub my back, I'll rub your back. They said that the best sites are the ones that have the most people talking about it. So the more sites that are pointing to a, to a website, we think that means it should be ranked higher. And that was the, that was the big aha. That was the, the idea that built Google. So they built this thing and they said, okay, uh, they sent these, created these spiders that go spider the internet and whichever one had the most links, they'd rank it the highest. That was the game. Okay, and so they did that, it worked, blew up stands for servers, they shifted it off, they bought google.com, they launched it there, and it became this huge thing. Now what's interesting though, is as it started growing bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, um, 
people like me started finding out about this and there's this huge opportunity because when Google's getting billions of hits a day, if you're number one for a really important keyword, you can literally make millions of dollars a day, right? The right keywords. And so when there's that much money on the line, all of a sudden the spammers and the scammers and the marketers and the entrepreneurs are thinking like, okay, how do we manipulate the system? And as soon as they figure like, what's the algorithm, what's working? And then Larry and Sergey are like, hey, our algorithm was based on backlinks. Like, that's it? Seriously, that's the secret backlinks? All right, that's the deal. I'm gonna hire 500 Indians, 300 in the Philippines, and we're gonna backlink the crap out of all my pages, okay? And we used to go out there and we would spam the living crap out of, did anyone here play during that time of the game? <laughs> it was so much fun. <laughs> um, it was so fun. Um, but we had like hire, hire people, we built software, and we would just spam the search engines. There used to be this thing called uh, FFA pages, free for all pages. They like would have open access, so you could just dump links on them. So there was software, it would find all these FFA pages, and you could buy the software, you could click a button, it would submit like 800,000 links that fast. And so you're just like, all right, what site should I rank? And you felt like you were on top of the world, and you click a button, all of a sudden your page would be number one in Google, and you're like, I own the world. Okay? <laughs> Now Google's like, oh my gosh, now all the crappy spammers are at the top of the search engines. Um, people are gonna stop using Google because they can't find what they want because all the spammers are winning. So Google's like, I gotta figure out this game. Like how do we beat the spammers and the scammers? It's like, we need to do this. And also you start watching the history. You watch how the algorithms updates. Like this happened and this happened and this happened. And you start seeing what, what they're doing and why they're doing it. And now we're in today's market where Google's way more sophisticated. They figured out the algorithm, it's, it's, it's different. But now you understand like, hey, what, like, Either I can go and fight against Google, which is like what the spammers do, right? Um, or, this is, I learned this from Stacey and Paul as well. This is also true in your relationship, in case you're wondering. Um, you can align with Google. Like, okay, what is their goal? This is their goal, this is what they actually want. So instead of trying to fight against it and try to trick them and find a loophole last for a couple of days, what if I align with what they're looking for and give them what they're looking for, and then I can rank and be there for long term? Okay, when you figure out like what the history was, like here's all the different iterations, here's where we are today, and this is their goal, then you can align with them and they can create exactly what they want. And if you do it right, then they'll reward you for that. That's amazing about these networks. If you do it the way they ask you to, they'll reward you for it. So that's the goal. Okay, so first step is always, I like, go into any new network, what's the history of it? Where's all the different iterations and where are they trying to go to? Let me align with that. Now we can build and, and have a long-term stable platform to build on. That's number one. Number two, then I go into any of these networks and the first thing I wanna figure out is who are the Dream 100 on this platform specific? Who has already figured out the algorithm and already is having success with it, okay? So um, let's just say we're gonna pick Instagram, for example, right? So if I take Instagram and I grab it, first thing, in fact, how many of you guys are on Instagram? Okay, the first thing you should do when you leave here today is go into Instagram and you should delete all of your friends, every one of them. They're screwing up your life, okay? This is why social media's got a bad rep. We're all sitting there like, what happened to my mom and my sister and my friend and that person and that person? Like, I've seen them for 13 years. They gained so much weight. This is so embarrassing. Like, that's what we waste our life on, right? <laughs> like, there's no place for social life and social media, just so you guys know, from your standpoint. Okay, the rest of the people, you like, we're above that. So delete all your friends. You don't need them, okay? Social media is a business tool. So you delete everybody, and then what you do is you go back into Instagram or Facebook or Pit, whatever app you're looking at and just follow your dream 100. Okay, I want your, your feed inside of Instagram or Facebook to be your market research tool, okay? That way I don't have to spend four hours looking at everybody's picture. I'm looking through really quick to say, what is my Dream 100 publishing right now? I wanna see, I wanna have my, my um, I wanna feel the pulse of the market at all given times, okay? So I can go in my phone, and within about five or six swipes, I can see what every single person in my market, everyone who's speaking to my dream customers, what they're publishing on this platform specifically, and then I can look and say, okay, what's actually working today? I start modeling it. Okay, they're doing this over here. That's interesting. Like, why are they posting that? I'm like, oh, it's, you know, so and so posts this, but didn't get very many, many views. But so and so posts this, and like, oh my gosh, they got 3.2 million views. Like, what did they do? Why did they do that? I want to look at that because that's a, um, if something's successful in your feed, that's proof of what the algorithm actually is today. Okay, I didn't publish what the algorithms are in the book because they change all the time. Instead, let me look at the Dream 100, people in my market serving my customers, and let me scroll through my feed and see what's working for them, and now I have a snapshot like, oh my gosh, how do they do their keywords? How do they do their linking? How, and I can see exactly what's working, and that's what we model, okay? It's proof of what the algorithms are rewarding today. Okay, for example, um, man, this is probably three and a half, four years ago. I'm doing this thing on Facebook, I'm swiping through, and, all of this, and I, follow, um, I follow my own Dream 100, but I also follow influencers in almost every market because I'm, that's the market I serve is all different markets. And so, um, so I'm watching it and all of a sudden in the weight loss industry, we start seeing this thing that started popping up first off. That was the first market I saw it in and they were meme videos. How many of you guys know what a meme video is? 
Okay, I start seeing them just in that market, only that market, nobody else. I start seeing them like, oh my gosh, that has like caught my attention. That's weird. I start looking at like the meme videos were getting so many clicks, likes, like just like you could tell by looking at the engagement, everything like something's different about that. Um, about a month and a half later, we had our inner circle meeting. Kaylin Poland was there. And Kaylin's like, oh my gosh, you guys, like the way she does. She's like, you got to see these things. They're called meme videos. And like, she's explaining it. And I was like, dang it, like, like that's the thing. And so then we started doing meme videos. And then other people also like, eventually everyone started doing them because that was what, the, that was what the, the pattern interrupt was. And everyone started doing them. And uh, they worked really good for a while. And then they started working. They still work, but they work less effective than they did initially. Because what happens is there's this pattern interrupt, right? And then everybody copies it. And then it becomes the actual pattern. Does that make sense? Like marketing is all about finding the pattern interrupts. So it's like, what's the thing that's going to interrupt the market? And then everyone copies it and then it becomes a pattern. Then you got to figure out how do I innovate again? But I'm always looking at like, what are the pattern interrupts that people are trying, trying right now? I'm going to try to, to be on the front of the wave and do it and capitalize right, right away. Okay. So I'm finding my dream 100. I'm looking at them, I'm watching and I'm modeling what they're doing on the specific platform. So I can see in real time what the algorithms are rewarding, what they're figuring out. And then we're going to try to model it. Okay. And hopefully innovate on top of it. Because um, if you're always just modeling, then you're part of, then you're, you, you're never going to be the, the one on the, on the front, the forefront. Okay. So you're always modeling, trying to, but, but creation on top of that, I'm like, like what, what else can I do? What else can I try to be different and, and unique? Okay. So that's the se second step. Okay. The third step is then now that I'm in this platform, I'm seeing all these people are doing stuff. Then I got to figure out, okay, what's, what's my strategy? Like, what am I going to do? What's the publishing plan that I want to do on this platform to really have success? Okay, and so you start looking at you start looking at um, the platform and looking at what's possible and what's available and things like that. Okay, and everyone's different. Um, when I was writing the book, it was fun because I was doing Facebook. So I'm like, okay, there's a ton of things to do. But like when it, when it all comes down, like what are the different pieces on Facebook? And then Instagram, I'm looking at okay, what are all the different publishing opportunities. I'm going to show you guys an example here in a second, but I'm looking for that out. I'm trying to figure it out and say, okay, now how do I create a publishing plan that I can do on this network and actually be consistent with? Okay, because publish, publishing something once doesn't benefit you at all. It's something you can be consistent with, okay? So like, for example, when I launched my podcast, uh, Marketing Your Car back in the day, um, how many of you guys listened to it back when it was Marketing Your Car? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. That makes me so happy. <laughs> the backstory behind that, I, I, I launched that podcast um, like the day after I, launched, after I fired like 80 employees. Uh, probably the worst possible time to launch a podcast about marketing, but... Uh, I needed something to do. I like to get my mind off of the pain. And I was like, you know, I'm going to start documenting this thing from like day one and we'll see what happens. And now it's crazy because now I have this whole five, 600 episode thing from like ground zero as we were trying to figure out this thing. In fact, it was funny, Julie Stoyan a year ago when she started working at ClickFunnels, um, one of her first projects was listen to every podcast I've done and then find the best ones and let's write this book. So we made the Marketing Secrets Black Book, which she put together. But I remember her messaging me and uh, as she was listening to stuff and she's like, you just did a podcast about how uh, that you'll never try to make more than $10 million a year. How you think anybody who does is stupid. I'm like, are you serious? I said that? She's like, yeah, I don't know why. I was like, huh. And then later she's like, oh my gosh, you literally just said, I'm working on a secret project with this guy named Todd. Uh, I think it's going to be the biggest thing. I think it's going to change the world. And I said that in an episode like two years before ClickFunnels launched. And, like, and she told me all these things. It's like, oh, how fast, how cool now to have this, this journey um, along the way, right? But um, as, I was, as I started publishing the, the podcast, I knew that if I, if I wasn't careful, I wasn't going to stick to it. So I'm like, I have to do something that I know I'm going to do. And so I just downsized um, forcefully from my huge, beautiful office down to this little tiny office because that's all we could afford after I fired 80 people. And it was just big enough to jam all the people we had left in there. And it was like four minutes from my house. And so I was like, I'm going to, every time I get in the car, I'm going to pull my phone out. I'm going to click record and just drive while I talk. Because I drive every day for four minutes, might as well just record my podcast then. Because I knew I could be consistent with it. Okay, that was the key. And so I plugged in and I did that. And so it's figuring out for you, like, if, if, if this is the platform, if I'm going to focus on Instagram, if I'm going to focus on Facebook, like, what is the strategy and then can I be consistent with it? Okay, and figure out how to weave those things into your daily life. Because if it's not consistent, it's not even worth doing. Okay, so that's step number three here in the framework. All right, step number four then is you come back and say, okay, now that I've got this thing figured out, I know my dream 100, I have my publishing is happening. That means when somebody comes from my Dream 100 over to me, that it's not just looking at a blank page. They're going to see some posts. They're going to see some images, whatever it is. They're going to see something. How do I earn my way in? Okay, how can I get to know these people? Like, what's my strategy for that? Okay, how do I actually build friends on this platform? Okay, it's funny for me. Um, if you look at, like, my, my surfing habits, 
like let's say Instagram, for example, I scroll through Instagram, I see <clears throat> the people that I'm Dream 100 and following, and I like their stuff, I comment on their stuff, I message them, I look at their Insta stories, I'm like, hey, what's up? Like, oh, that's so funny. And people are like, I can't believe you messaged me. I'm like, yeah. Okay, that's how I'm building these relationships, I'm earning my way in, okay? I know the people that comment on my, on my stuff because I, I see them in my feed all the time. Like, I'm, I'm aware of who those people are. And I wanna make sure that like, other people are aware of it as well. In fact, Ryan Holiday, who like, is my favorite author right now, he's just finishing his, uh, his new book called Stillness is the Way, and he posted on Facebook, on his Instagram, uh, the manuscript printed out. And so I saw that, and I go comment, I'm like, dude, you're insane, I can't, like, I'm freaking out in this big, huge post about it, right? Making sure that he saw it, because I'm like, first off, he's insanely good, and like, I want to meet him anyway. And second off, like, nobody had commented yet, okay? He just posted it, so I'm gonna be the first one to comment. So I commented, and just told him how great he is, and then he DM'd me, like, dude, he's like, I didn't know he knew that you followed me. And, uh, and that's, he, that's what he said back, he said, I know you followed me, thanks for, um, for sending me the message. And I wrote back, I was like, dude, not only do I follow you, you are literally my favorite author. Like, you are insane. Now, this book, out of this, out of this, out of this, and just like told him all the stuff about himself. Next morning, I get a message, he's like, well, that was a good way to wake up. I can't believe, <laughs> he's like, I can't believe, da, da, da. And I'm like, yeah. And I was like, do you wanna speak of Funnel Hacking Live? And like, boom, like, the relationship. How do I serve him, okay? Immediately, like, that's the goal. And so I'm on my feet, I have my dream 100. Like, I'm trying to earn my way in. I'm trying to get to know them. I'm sending them good vibes. The more you do that, the more these people get to know you and you start building relationships, okay? It's not hard, you're on Instagram anyway, you deleted all your friends, these are your new friends. Go make friends with them. Tell them how great they are. Don't talk about yourself though. This is a secret. Most people don't get this. Um, I can tell you from the, my feed. Um, the people who message me who I don't respond back to are the ones who, hey man, um, well you get the people from overseas that are like, please wire money, please sir. I'm like, no, I'm not. Like, <laughs> You get a lot, I get a lot, it's insane. There's so many of those. But, um, but the other ones, right, like where they're getting to know you and like, like you, anyway, it's, it's different, okay? You see who you communicate with. So working your way is number one. Number two then is I start looking, okay, now that I'm looking at this, I'm getting to know these people, like but how, can I, how can I also buy my way and how can I get into these, these different things, right? And so for example, like um, I'll go to the podcasting because this is kind of what we're geeking out on right now. Um, you know, I, I did a, a while ago, I did a whole podcast circuit where I try to get everybody's podcast. And some of them, like, I stuck. Like, I, I listen to everyone's podcast before I go on just to, like, make sure that I know how to, you know, how to talk to the host and not look stupid when I'm talking to him. And a couple of them, like, I love their podcast, so I kept listening and I just become obsessed with it now. So then it's like, I hear the ads happening over and over and over again. So we're like, hey, how do we, how do we buy our way in now? Like, how do I get my ad on? Like, I worked my way in, but, like, I'd love to buy my way in as well. And now we're starting to do podcast advertising, which has been super fun thing. I'm like, man, we did it. It's funny, because we did a, a podcast with JLD it sold 500 copies of the Dot Com Seekers book, and for a year, uh, two years, I didn't get back on the podcast. I'm like, oh, I got all those buyers. Stupidest thing I ever did. Two years later, I do the Expert Seekers book. He sells like a thousand copies of it. I'm like, we probably should have like done more than two interviews in two years on his thing. And so I was like, JLD, what's um, how do we get on here more often? He's like, well, you buy ads, but if you want, you can just buy all the ads for an entire year. I say, like, that sounds like a good idea. So we bought every ad he has for next year. It's just Click Funnels, okay? So now it's all us. So now every single person, like, if we make that much money off two, two things, how much do I make if I had all of them? Okay, and I don't recommend buying all of them. That's kind of stupid, but I was really excited when he like, pitched me on. I'm like, yes. Anyway, I respect you for asking. That was amazing. But same thing, now we're with Mixergy. Like, now we're buying Mixergy ads. I love that podcast. So, like, plug them in there. So, like, we're starting to plug these in because I'm like, man, if I get these big hits of traffic off of earning my way in, what if I had consistency coming through there? So we're plugging into more of those kind of things. Same thing on Instagram, right? We do deals with, with uh, uh, I'll show you guys some examples here. We, we'll, um, we'll pay influencers to go and post, uh, you know, post pictures of them with my book or whatever. And the ones who do really, really well, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll pay longer term contracts or things like that just to get them to do more often and talk about us more often. So I'm working my way and I'm buying my way into the people that already have access to my Dream 100, okay? And then the last step of the framework here is stay connected to your Dream 100, okay? The most valuable thing I did 15 years ago when I started, is I actually became friends with my Dream 100. Weird. I didn't just send them a box in the mail and never contact them again. I became friends with them. I called them up. When they, someone got married in their family, I'd send them a gift. I would talk to them. I'd ask them questions. I would share stuff with them. I would like go out of my way when something cool happened. Be like, oh my gosh, I just figured this thing out. Check this out. And they're like, wow, thanks for telling me that. Oh my gosh, check this out. And I was like sending them the stuff that's working. What happened is all of a sudden they started being like, dude, that's awesome, Russell. Check out what I just did too. And they send stuff back and we go back and forth and back and forth. I made Slack groups and Skype groups and all sorts of stuff where my dream went on. I get to know them at an intimate level. I build a relationship with them and then guess what happens? 
when the algorithms shift and everyone's freaking out, it can be me sitting there trying to figure it out or me saying like, wh like, what's working? What do you got? What do you got? I'm like, well, we tried this, we tried this. Like, oh my gosh, this is hot right now. Try this. Try and also now I have a whole network of people who are all sharing Intel back. Like that's the big secret, okay? If you want to master this, it's building the Dream 100 on each of these platforms and sharing what's working with everybody. Build, build, build real relationships because um, as the algorithm shift, as people get, as the, I call it in the book, the slaps and the snaps happen and they shift things around. Um, if you've got a network of people who are all in the same game, who are all serving the same customers, who all care about each other, now when things are changing, man, I remember when Google first shut everybody down and we were all sitting there like, Google ads are gone. Like, we were rich, now we're broke, we have no Google ads, what do we do? And everyone's like, I don't know, but I'm trying this, I'm trying, and we were all just trying stuff. And as soon as any piece of something worked, like, I tried this, it worked, like, oh my gosh, we would try that, oh, it worked, boom, 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 and we were sharing back and forth, and within months, we're back on top again, okay? Because we had that network. All right, Whew. 15 more minutes. Okay, I'm gonna go and do an actual example of one of these with you guys, is that cool? Yeah. So, you have, so you have the framework, so this is the framework. You can take this with any, so again, any platform, anything. In fact, it's funny, um, I saw Gary Vee talk today about TikTok's gonna be this big thing, and um, Gary Vee and I have this like weird relationship where like, I don't think we like each other. Um, <laughs> so uh, I don't usually pay attention to what he's saying, but uh, my daughter is obsessed with TikTok and she TikToks like 400 times a day at any given second. And so um, this week I pulled her aside. I was like, Ellie, this is a deal. I need your help. She's like, what do you need, Dad? I'm like, I need you to teach me how to TikTok. <laughs> she's like, what? I'm like, yeah, I got to understand how this whole process works. How's the platform work? Like, and she's like, Dad, that's so weird. I'm like, I don't know the history. It started as Musical.ly. It got bought over here. This is like, I know the whole thing. But like, what's the goal? Like, why do you do this? Like, I want to understand. Like, like, walk me through it. So my daughter's teaching me how to do the thing and how to do like the stuff. And like, then she logs into my account and she goes to all her videos and hearts every single one of them. It's the funniest thing. And she has my, my wife's phone and logs in. And she, she wants the hearts. So she has like eight hearts per video. So if you guys can go like her video, she would flip out. Um, actually, don't do that because I don't want all you guys following my daughter. It's kind of creepy. <laughs> I tell her, I'm like, I don't want you out. Anyway, that's a whole other story. I'm just teasing, you guys can go follow her. Um, but I want to understand, so I'm going through that history and goal. So she's teaching that right now, I'm learning the process, I'm making videos with her to understand like, how does this platform work? Like, what's the intrigue? Like, why, how does it work? Like, how could we actually use this? So that's for number one. Number two, I started already looking like, who's the dream one? Like, who are people already figured this out? And there's not a lot yet, it's super early in the network. The network may die, but I'm like, but if it becomes like, like Vine did, or if it becomes like Snapchat, these other ones, like I wanna be in there kind of early. So we're trying to figure these things out. Like who are the Dream 100? Is there anybody in our market that's kind of figured this out and trying to figure those things out? And then figuring out like, is there a publishing plan? Like what does that look like? Is it me and Ellie like doing a dance party once a day and, and publishing? Is it me dancing at work? Is it me just like, I, I don't know. Like I'm trying to figure out that, that part of it, right? But, but we're going through this process right now as, as a new network. Same thing like looking back at Twitter, like Twitter was up and now it's down. It's like, is it worth, is it worth going into? Well, maybe. If so, let's look at this, like, what was, what was the history of Twitter? How did it work? Like, what's their goal? Like, where are they at right now? Let me understand that, that, that piece. Maybe I can get traffic for really cheap right now because it's, because it's down so much, right? Then it's like, okay, who are the people who are still publishing on Twitter? Okay, there's all these people who are still there. Who, who are they? Why are they? How are they having success? Let me follow those people. Let me delete all the other friends from Twitter and just follow those people so I can start watching it. What are they doing? How are they engaging in conversations? Okay, and what's my Twitter plan? How am I gonna plug into that? And then how am I gonna get to know these people? And like, that's the pattern over and over and over and over and over again, no matter what the network is. Past, present, future. Cool? Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna do this really quick. I got about 13 more minutes. Um, and so uh, I'm gonna go uh, into social media, specifically more Instagram, and kind of just take you guys through the pattern, okay? Um, so I don't have, I, in the book, it talks more about history of, of Instagram, but I wanted to share more of my history with social media because, um, it fits more into like a uh, teaching moment. So um, first we'll talk about my history with social media. So when I first got into social media, this is right when Twitter was like, was blowing up, right? I was a little slow to Facebook, but then Twitter started coming out. I'm like, oh my gosh, I gotta figure this stupid thing out. So I got into Twitter. I bought one of the Twitter bots and went and like spammed everybody and got me to follow a million people. Cause that's what we, us marketers do. Like what's the algorithm? How do we hack it? So um, bought the software, hacked it. I got like, I don't know, 20,000 followers on, on Twitter. And then I started doing what marketers do. I started dropping links to my funnels and waiting for people to give me money. And guess what happened? They didn't give me money. And they all started unfollowing me. And like, I got no engagement. And I was like, I hate social media. I don't understand this. I just want to sell stuff. Like, I was really confused. This is probably 10 years ago. And uh, about the same time, uh, Perry Belcher. How many of you guys know Perry Belcher? Okay, Perry's one of my favorite people. He, um, in fact, like, I have three or four stories in the Traffic Seekers book about Perry. Um, he jumped onto Twitter, did the Perry thing. And within like two or three months, built up a Twitter following of like over 100,000 people. And he's like the life of this party. Like everyone's hanging out. Like it's just like, I log into Twitter and like everyone thinks Perry's so cool. I'm like, why is no one like talking about, no 
Everyone's commenting on my stuff. Like, Perry, you have eight million comments. I'm like, oh, he's so much cooler than me. I hate this guy, <laughs> right? And then after doing this for two or three months, things like, hey, guys, I'm doing this webinar. Show how I use Twitter. And like, it blew up. I think they got 20 or 30,000 people to register for this webinar. They jumped on. I still remember because um, they messaged me to try to figure out, like, we're trying to like, like Jimmy rigged together like 12 go to webinar accounts to be able to like handle all these people. Like, can we borrow your go to webinar account? I'm like, I guess that's weird. So like, they put all these go to webinars account to handle all the people from Twitter subscribing this thing. They did a webinar. They sold a course and over $1,000 um, in one webinar. Or excuse me, $1,000, that's not a big deal. They did over a million dollars from the one webinar. And I was like, this doesn't make any sense to me. He logs into Twitter, spends three months like hanging out at this party and then does a webinar and clears a million bucks. And I am not making anything through Twitter. I don't get it. So finally I called him. I'm like, dude, explain this whole thing to me. Like, I don't get it. And he looks at me and he laughs. He's like, yeah, you're trying to do regular marketing on social media. That's why you're failing. I'm like, okay, well, what am I do? What do I need to do? He's like, okay, this is the secret. He's like, have you ever been to a networking party? I'm like, no. He's like, why not? I'm like, I'm scared of people. He's like, okay, well, <laughs> have you ever seen it on a movie before? I'm like, yeah. He's like, okay, so Twitter is a party. He's like, Twitter, Facebook, like, these things are a party. So if you go to the party and you're the dude at the party pitching your product, guess what? They kick you out of the party or they don't talk to you and everyone avoids you. You don't wanna be that guy. Right now, you're that guy in the party, Russell. I was like, I don't wanna be that guy in the party. Like, what do I do? He's like, first thing is delete every post you've ever made. I'm like, okay. So I'm deleting all my posts as he's talking to me. He's like, this is how I look at it. This is a, this is a social party. He's like, I showed up at Twitter and I, I was a networking party. I hung out with people, I asked them questions about their friends and their family, and we shared stories, and we had a good time, and they liked me, and we talked about the movies that were on, and like all the stuff you do in a networking event to build a relationship. And they shared me with their friends, and their friends, and their friends, and three months later, I had 100,000 people following me, and they're all friends, we're hanging out, okay? He's like, when you're at a party, you meet a bunch of friends, guess what you do at the end of the party? I'm like, I don't know, I've never been to one before. He's like, at the end of the party, you ask your friends, like, hey, the party's over, you wanna come to my house? I'm like, really? He's like, yeah. And they jump in the car, we come to your house, and then at your house, that's where you get them. This is the spot that's safe. And now you're at your house, like, hey, do you want to watch the movie? Hey, do you want to buy this thing? Hey, do you, like, whatever that thing is. He's like, I bring it to my house. He's like, for me, it was my blog at the time. He's like, I take it to my blog. And on my blog, they see the pictures of my family. They see my things, stuff like that. And then they come in and they buy my stuff off of this platform. I don't annoy people at the party. I just have a party. And then I bring them over. It's like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. And so I started looking at it through that lens. So I started saying, okay, I'm coming to these places to be social and I drive them back to my house. And for me, the house is wherever I have my show. It could be YouTube, podcast, blog, whatever your thing is. I invite people there and that's where your selling happens. You don't sell on these platforms. The platforms were hanging out, having a party and bringing them over, okay? So that was my understanding of social um, as, as I started doing these different social networks. So when Instagram came out, I was like, okay, that's the history. That's my understanding of social media. Let me jump in and kind of figure it out, okay? So I'm gonna talk about Instagram specifically because that's the one that... Um, We've been having a lot of fun with recently. So step number two then is now I'm on Instagram. I'm okay, who, like, who is on Instagram being successful in my market? So I start looking, okay, who are the people that are already selling to my dream customers? And I knew a bunch of them before, people that I had um, been friends with in, uh, you know, just in business. So I started following all of them. I started looking for other people. I started searching for the tags and the keywords and like entrepreneurship and business and like funnels and to start searching things on Instagram to start finding different influencers who started um, just popping up. And I started following them. So I started following the Dream 100. And what's crazy to this day is like, I still, man, probably two or three times a week, um, new people pop up that are somehow they show up my feed uh, that, you know, I follow a bunch of different tags and stuff like that, which is outside of the context of this, but, but they pop up and I see them and I start following them and like, uh, uh, and they, and I added my dream 100 and like just all the time people, I'm always, it's not like a one-time thing. It's like, I'm always looking for people, right? When I go to, the, to somebody who's got a big YouTube video and they have, there's a, if there's an Instagram link, I go click on Instagram and go over there and I add them to my Instagram as well. I'm trying to find my dream 100 and keep building out my list. Okay. So I find those people and every day I log into Instagram, I start seeing like, what are they doing? Like I remember like three, three or four months ago, um, all my feeds started looking like these annoying, it looks like somebody took, like they tweeted something they took a picture of the tweet and they posted on Instagram. You guys seen that before? I was like, that is the ugliest thing in the world. And I started looking at my feed and like, there's tons of them. I started looking at it and like, they're getting tons of engagements and comments and things. I'm like, crap, I gotta do this stupid tweet picture thing. <laughs> okay, but that's what's working. And I care more about what's working than what makes me look cool. So I'm like, okay, let's try it out. We tried a couple, I'm like, oh my gosh, it worked. And for the next like two or three months, like we did those every three or four things and then they were successful, they worked, right? So I started looking at like, what are other people doing so I can look at that, I can model it and start changing, right? Um, that's number two is finding dream 100 and modeling them. Okay. Number three, then we come back and say, okay, what's, what's our publishing 
strategy for this platform. Okay, every platform is different. But again, what's the publishing strategy that I can be successful with and do over and over and over and over and over again? Okay. So for Instagram, I start looking at it, and their app. There's a whole bunch of stuff. How many of you guys use Instagram every? Like you actually use Instagram a lot. How many of you guys are like this is like something little kids use, and I don't know why I'd ever use this. Okay, that's how it was for a long time. So Instagram's got a lot of things, but there's basically four core ways that people publish on Instagram. Okay. Number one are stories. Number two is your wall. Number three is, uh, is lives, like it's kind of like Facebook Live, Instagram Live. And number four is I-G-T to the V. All right, those are the four ways. So I'm, I'm getting a layout of the land, like what's happening, what's working, what are people doing? I'm looking at all this stuff, I'm like, okay, when all of a sudden these are the, the, for the most part, the four ways people publish on Instagram, okay? So then I start like watching my dream, I'm like, what are they doing? Like what's working? Like what are the things I connect with? So I just start with stories. So look at the very top, um, the top of Instagram, you've got the left-hand side, it says your story, a little circle there. And then right next to it are all the stories of your dream 100. And this is like literally a reality show of their life. So every night when I'm brushing my teeth, I open Instagram and I click on the first head there. And when I'm brushing my teeth, I start watching every, a bunch of you guys, the weird crap you do all day. Okay. And it's really fun. I'm like, oh, this is cool. Like I saw Steven this morning waking up and then coming here and then behind the scenes I saw it, and he's on stage and I see everyone else do this. And like, I see like a reality show of Steven's life and like, a minute and a half, I know everything happened to Steven that day. I'm like, huh. Then I go to the next person. I watch their reality show. Then I go to the next, the next. Within like 15 minutes of me brushing my teeth, I don't brush that long. Uh, within a couple minutes, <laughs> I get a really good glimpse of my Dream 100, what they all did that day. Okay? And as I'm in there, I'm like shooting some messages like, oh, dude, that's cool. Oh, that's awesome. And like, I'm connecting with these people. And so I'm like, I can't let Russell watch my story today. That's so cool. How weird is that? Okay? So I'm connecting. I'm seeing what's happening. And I get laid out of land. And I say, okay, it looks like what, what's happening here as I'm watching this, is the people just throughout the day are spending 15 seconds kind of documenting their journey. So can I, can I weave that into my life, that, into my publishing? Like, can I do that and be consistent? And at first I was like, nah, that's kind of weird. And finally I was like, I'm just going to try it. And so now throughout my day, I'm going to my phone. Whenever something cool is happening or I'm transitioning to something or I'm learning something, I grab my phone. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm about to go uh, jump in my car. We're heading down to Offermind. We're going to have some fun. Steven, it's going to be awesome. Boom, 15 seconds and I'm off. I get to offer mine. I'm in the back here. I'm like, I'm backstage, about to go on stage. It's so much fun. Oh, here's the monitors. I show the monitors. Boom. Okay. And then I'm sure some of you guys are going to Instagram me and tag me, right? And then I'll share that on my thing. And then I'll like my whole journey of the day, like behind the scenes reality show, I kind of share every single day. Okay. How many of you guys feel like you have a deep connection with me or my family or Nora because you see behind the scenes of my day every single life? Yeah. <coughs> so stories became basically like my... Um, uh, my reality show. I think um, outside of podcasting, I think stories are the, the most powerful way for your audience to connect with you. They just see behind the scenes of your life and uh, in, in a really intimate, cool way. It first seems kind of weird and uh, after a while, um, you, you'll love it. Especially if you follow other people and start seeing what they're doing. Like It's like, oh my gosh, this person's real. It's just like me. And they, they connect with you to a whole different level. Okay, number two is your wall. I'm running out of time, so I'll go fast. Um, in the wall, you start looking like what, like what are people posting and how are they posting? One, um, uh, how many of you guys are Jenna Kucher fans in here? Oh, Jenna's the coolest, like literally one of the coolest entrepreneurs I've ever met in my life. She's a really good Instagram course and I, um, uh, a lot of this I, I was able to share from her course she let me. But basically what she does on the wall, she says every single human should have at least five categories of things that interest you, right? You don't want to look at me, you're, someone doesn't want to come to your news feed and be like, oh, here's 800 funnels Russell built. Cause it's like, that's a very one dimensional human. So she says, like, pick what are five things you're interested in. So for me, it's like family, faith, funnels, <laughs> wrestling, <laughs> fun. Anyway, so you pick five categories of things that are interesting to you, okay? And what you do is the first thing you post is a picture of your family. And the next post on your wall is a picture of your funnels, then your furry thing, then your... I can't remember what they are. Okay, but you rotate through the different categories. That way when someone shows up your page, they may not care about funnels, but they see your family and they're cute. Or maybe they care about uh, funnels, they see, you know, whatever the thing is, but they show up and there's, there's um, a, a human being that's multidimensional they connect with. They connect with one of your different things. Okay? And so what, what Jenna recommends doing, that I think is super cool, is on your phone, you just make a little folder on your, in your albums, an album for each of these different five categories. Then we got your family for the weekend. You take pictures, a whole bunch of pictures for yourself. And you have a whole bunch of pictures in your family category. So when you know family's up next, you just go to family like, oh, what's, oh last week we did that cool picture. I'm going to post that one. Okay, and you do a whole bunch of pictures for this. So you just make these categories. And throughout your day, you're taking cool pictures of the stuff you're doing. 
And then as you know, like uh, as you're posting, you just go in the, the folder, like what's a cool family picture I could post today? Oh yeah, here's us at the beach. Here's us doing this cool thing. And you just rotate through these in five categories. Usually for right now, it's two times, two times a day we post on the wall. Okay, stories are eight to 30 times, depending on how excited I am for the day. And that's there. Okay, um, so there's two different ways to publish. So I'm like, I can do that. I can do a bunch of stories throughout the day and twice a day we can find a picture for my, for my photo album that are kind of cool and post them in there. Um, that's simple to do. I can weave that in my life without like messing things up. Now I've got most of the publishing here. Lives, um, I like the Facebook Live platform better. So I only do lives when I go live on Facebook Live and I just get two phones. So I'm like, okay, I'm just, whenever I do Facebook Live, I'll plug that in. Otherwise, I'm not even gonna worry about that part at all. And then IGTV, I think is really good for how-tos as I'm watching my Dream 100 right now. So we're doing good. So we're starting to build take how-to videos and plug them in there. So I look at like, these are the ways you can publish and then building out a publishing plan, okay? I do this a couple times a day, twice a day, uh, once maybe every other week. And then this is like maybe three times a month, maybe four times a month we'll publish a how-to video and plug it in there. Now I have a publishing pl plan and I can stick with it. Okay, maybe some of you are like, that's insane, Russell, I can't do that. Maybe I'm gonna do this. I'm not gonna do that at all. I don't even wanna do that. So this sounds creepy. I don't wanna show up. I can post two pictures a, a, a day. That's easy. And you kind of figure out for you what the actual publishing plan you want it to be. I don't care, but that's kind of the, the process. Something you'd be consistent with. Inside the book, we share different publishing plans for every platform to give you as kind of a basics of like, oh, here's what we could do. Okay? And I've got 34 more seconds. So I'll go through the next couple steps of the, of the thing real quick. Next thing we do is then we start working our way and we buy our way. So Instagram, I was like, well, how do I work my way in? I'm like, well, let me take all these Dream 100, I have a bunch of followers. Uh, this is an example of one of our Dream 100. She's got 90,000 followers on Facebook. So I was like, let me buy my way in here. So we gave her some money. We shipped her a copy of the book. She took a picture of her holding the book and said, this book's awesome. And, uh, and then she gave me a shout out at the bottom. So it says like, this book's awesome. This is at Russell Brunson. It's called the shout out. Instagram, that's how it works. We did a shout out. People come here, they see the picture. They click on my link. They follow my profile. And boom, now they're added to my following. So that's one example where we buy our way and we can also work our way. You can, do, you can do free shout outs, paid shout outs, things like that to grow the following. And then also we do paid ads and things like that. Again, I don't have time in the next zero seconds to go through, but that's the next step of the process. And last step of the process is on friends with all the people that are publishing on Instagram. We're always sharing notes, right? What's working, what's not working. I tried this, I tried that. Engagement did awesome on this, it did horrible here. And I'm able to find out the pulse of the algorithm right now by connecting with the people who are also on the platform and finding out from them and building out really, really good relationships. And that, you guys, is kind of the framework that we use over and over again. And if we had more time, I was gonna apply the same framework to Google, and we could, we're not going today. You can apply it to YouTube, you can apply it to Twitter, to Pinterest, like whatever it is, but that's the, the process. Figuring out the history, okay, what happened, what's the goal of the platform, understanding, or finding your Dream 100 and modeling them, number three is figuring out your publishing platform, and figuring out how to buy your way in, how to work your way in, and then staying connected with the people, and that framework will get you traffic for the rest of your life. Sound good? Yeah. All right.